Hi, my name is Richard Corden. I'm the lead software developer at Programming Research. And today I'm going to go through the headline features of our latest product, QAC++ 3.0, which was released earlier this year. Just an overview of the discussion, I'm going to go through three of the key new features in the new release, should take approximately 15 minutes, and our content today is going to be relatively technical, showing some analysis of actual source code and the resulting messages as produced by QAC++. The three fe main features we're going to touch on is deep flow data flow, which is the integration of data flow analysis into QAC++, enhancements to resource usage tracking, and also some examples of language analysis in terms of catching bugs in use of language. Data flow analysis provides a mechanism to detect serious runtime behaviors where there are problems such as buffer overflows, null pointer dereferences, in undefined behavior as a result of mathematical operations and use of unset variables, etc. This kind of area is very much related to security checking. As a result of using an industry-proven SMT solver and combined with our existing high-fidelity modeling of the C++ language, we're actually able to provide very accurate and precise results. The analysis is achieved interfunction by doing tight binding between arguments and their parameters. So this is very similar to how inlining happens within the compiler. We're actually taking a function body and almost injecting it directly into the caller point. And this results in very accurate modeling. As a result of doing it this way, we actually require the function's definitions to be visible. And so at the moment, it's limited to translation units. Another area of, of improvement is that of intervariable dependency tracking, which helps us ensure that we have low false positives and negatives. And finally, by tracking the values that are referred to by pointers, we're actually able to increase the scope and the range of values that are actually checked and tracked. So now I'm going to switch over and just show some of the output from our tool. So here in our first example, we're showing two of the main aspects, interfunction and pointer aliasing. So at the top of the source file, we can see that we have a function in it which has been declared. And then later on at the bottom, it's been defined. So initially when we perform the analysis of this function, because we have an unguarded dereference of p, we have a possible message highlighting that it may be a null pointer. Within the body of our function f, which is calling the function in it, we have a condition which initializes the value, and then we have another condition, slightly different, and followed by a division by zero. QAC++ is correctly identifying that in, this, in the true block of the if statement, i must be zero. It knows this because on top of the other abilities it has, it is performing very detailed bit analysis of its variables. And so it's able to detect that j modulus 2 is actually re going to return the same result as j and bitwise and 1. The next example highlights our loop modeling in data flow. So here we have another function body f, and we're going to run over some allocated memory so we allocate a buffer buff with some unknown maximum size. And then we go, we iterate from the beginning of the buffer up to what we think is the end of the buffer, and we perform an initialization of each value to zero. Unfortunately, our developer in this case has made a mistake. And instead of saying p less than buff plus size, he said b less than or equal to buff plus size. The result is that on the last iteration, p will point to one past the end of the array, which although referring to that memory location is OK, dereferencing and writing to it is not OK. Hence, we get a definite dereference of an invalid point of value. And we also get a helpful message telling us that this happens in the last iteration. Another area here is we have the p has been incremented. And so on the very last iteration, the final increment will go from the one past the end to one more, which is actually, again, undefined behavior. And so we have computing an invalid pointer value. Dataflow performs three kinds of analysis on loops. It performs first iteration, last iteration, and also an intermediate iteration. 
The final example in the data flow category relates to providing messages for unknown values or unknown conditions where should we reach a particular block, we will definitely have an issue. So here we have a call from F, a call from bar, where we're passing in null and k. And we can tell that there must be some relationship between the parameter p and the parameter k, as when we have a guard on k, but then we have a dereference of p. So Dataflow is highlighting for this, trans for this translation unit that should we be called from here, from the call from bar, then we will definitely have a dereference of a null pointer. In order to get around this, the developer should add an assertion that highlights that only when k is greater than 0 will p ever possibly be null. And as a result of this extra assertion, not only will the code be more robust, but our tool will no longer issue the, the message about the definite dereference of a null pointer. The next area of interest relates to resource issues. QAC++ is tracking resources and making sure that they are freed somewhere within the translation unit. Most people would associate resource, would know it to be memory allocation and memory freeing and memory leaks. But in the case of QAC++ 3.0, it's not limited to memory leaks. And in, the, in that sense, we perform analysis of file pointers and pipes. Analysis uses the syntax, the syntax usage engine, so tracking is performed across the functions within the translation unit. There's also special handling of constructors and destructors, which allows us to detect if memory allocated or file files acquired within the constructor are then freed in the destructor. So again, we have a couple of examples of this. So here we can see Again, two functions. We have an open file or fail call and int main. So in the case of open file or fail, we perform three, we acquire three resources. The first acquires some memory, and the second two acquire some, open some files. In the case of p, it's, the memory is never freed within the function body. And it's also not passed to another function, nor is it returned, and as such, we can guarantee that it is definitely lost. It's definitely a memory leak. In the case of F1, we've opened the file, and again, we definitely haven't closed the file with it from within this function, so we can say for certain that we haven't allocated, we haven't released the resource. And finally, we have this last um, file, F2, which also refers to a file. But this file, has, this file handle has been returned from the function. And as such, within this function body, we can't be sure if F2 is ever closed. The caller, however, now knows that file refers to an open file handle. And as a result of it not being closed from within int main, we can also tell here that the dynamically allocated resource has not been released. highlighting the constructor and destructors, here we have a constructor that allocates some memory and assigns it to its member P, and also uh, opens a file and assigns it to its member M file. And again, as a result of them not being um, released from the destructor, we have messages highlighting that, that these are definitely um, not released. The final area I'm going to touch on on this talk relates to that of language issues and language use resulting in bugs. QAC++ is the industry leader in coding standard enforcement with very high enforcement of the Joint Stride Fighter coding standard, MISR C++, and also our own coding standard, High Integrity C++. But not all bugs are data flow or resource base. Incorrect use of language may result in equally difficult bugs to find. In the case of QAC++, our existing defensive analysis has been enhanced in order to provide, provide bug checking against language features. And so two areas of that relate to um, constructors, copy constructors and copy assignment operators, and also the hierarchies and virtual structures within base classes in the hierarchy. 
So again, we'll just have two examples of that. So here we have a class which defines a copy assignment operator. And this copy assignment operator performs some uh, operations on its pointer member. It allocates some new memory and copies the value across. What's missing here is the copy constructor, which as a result of the copy assignment operator more than likely should be defined. And we can actually tell from the, help in, the helpful help in QAC++, the advice actually highlights that we should really have a copy constructor for the same reason that we need the copy assignment operator. Having said that, simply because there isn't a copy constructor does not mean that this code has a bug in it. It only really becomes a bug should anybody try to use the class in such a way that the copy constructor is required. And in this way, QAC++ 3.0 has been enhanced. So now we can tell that when the copy constructor is actually used, as it is in this example here, although it's using the assignment operator, we actually have a call to the, to the implicitly defined copy constructor. And so this is almost certainly a bug with the code. The final example relates to the hierarchies and virtual bases. So here we have an example where we have a class derived inheriting from public base. If we, need to derive, if we need to ever refer to the hierarchy via the base class, and we're going to, we're going to potentially delete uh, objects of the hierarchy via the base class, well then, strictly speaking, um, the base class will need to be virtual. But that, as I say, that is only required if the hierarchy is intended to be used that way in a polymorphic way. So the defensive message relate, currently issued by QAC++ is correct, but it's not necessarily a bug. Here below, however, we can see where we're actually deleting an object of type uh, base or potentially a, another dynamic object. So we're deleting a value using the base class, using a pointer to the base class. And as a result, this is now very likely a problem, as in we know that this, this base class is being used, in a way that's polymorphic, and therefore this almost certainly could be resulting in undefined behavior as a result of the delete via the, the non-virtual base class, non-virtual destructor. So in summary, we've covered three of the crucial topics in C++ development, and also highlights, highlighted the new and, and enhanced capabilities of our tool. So DF data flow catches unique and crucial bugs. We're also catching important misuse of resources and you, as well as unique and powerful language bug detection. At this point, I'd like to thank you for your time and just refer you to our website, programmingresearch.com, if you'd like to get some more information.